There will be a hearing to determine if a crime's been committed and whether it should go for trial. Mr. Russell should be ready for the worst. Believe me, Mr. Russell is always ready for the worst. We can't afford a scandal, not when I'm so near. I'm facing the possibility of prison, and my wife is more concerned with the date of a ball. I love you. Wasn't it time we took control of our own lives? You are not being fair, Aunt Agnes. Isn't it just possible you may have misjudged him? It is just possible an earthquake may destroy New York, but it's not likely. You're to dismiss Turner. Mrs. Van Ryan thinks she's been having an affair. How does she know? May I introduce Mr. Thomas Edison! There's always the potential for, are you going to be perceived as a villain, and ultimately, how will that affect the stock price? George, I know, was based a little bit on Jay Gould, and I think Jay Gould was really vilified in the papers at the time because of what happens with the train derailment. There's the threat that George becomes seen that way. They know what caused the crash. Someone in my organization used old and damaged axles on the engine, killing five men in the process. Bertha has to go to a train crash, and she completely shifts gears and, and wears her version of a very conservative, steady, staid dress. Again, it shows her social intelligence. Thank you, Mr. Russell. We're very grateful, Miss Barton. As far as she's concerned, it's a terrible thing. But in Bertha's thinking, what we have to do now is contain the damage. And it's very clear that she's mostly concerned with her reputation and not necessarily about the people who are killed. What I love about it is that it complicates Bertha's character in that when it comes to her social ambitions, she's myopic. We must try and control the damage. And the company's taken a bit of a dent, but we seem to be climbing back. No, I meant the damage to us, you and me. Can you manage the papers? In a way, it makes her tough. But in another way, she's right. I mean, when something's happened, really, just sitting there and sobbing doesn't help anyone. George sees it for the real threat that it is, that he could potentially be in prison, that they could lose everything, that their company could be held criminally liable for what happened. Bertha has such confidence, such faith in George, he is a little bit taken aback that she's not worried. I heard today that Mr. McAllister wants to come here for luncheon. What do you think of that? I think the fact that five men are dead is a little more important than whether or not the great ward McAllister comes here for luncheon. I think characters should have flaws and should have blind spots. And it's just a testament to the writing that that's in there. I had a message from Mrs. Fish this morning. Mm -hmm. She's having a tea party, and she's invited me and Gladys. You will go, but not Gladys. Carrie Astor will be there. Oh, very well. You know, I'm helpless when you all gang up against me. Gladys has an opportunity to be out in society and, and run into Carrie Astor. Bertha was looking for a way to create that friendship, to cultivate it, and then to see how she can use it to her advantage. The fact is, I have a very difficult mother. My mother keeps me under house arrest. I'm allowed no friends. God forbid I should speak to a man. Gladys and Carrie Astor are almost two peas in a pod. They're both struggling with very similar expectations from their mothers. I think Gladys can accept that fact as long as she's able to finally step into society and have her moment. She's okay to share the spotlight if they both get something out of it. I just looked in to see if Gladys could join a few friends of mine for a luncheon next week. Maybe we could arrange a quadrille for it? Groups of men and girls rehearsed various dances that they performed before the guests. Think what you'd like to dance, Gladys. Perhaps Miss Astor can help. And I think she justifies it because everything she's doing is in service of her daughter. The ends justify the means for her always. As far as Church and Bannister goes, I think he's like Babe Ruth at first. I mean, he's a British butler. He's the gold standard. But then the first time he gets to the house, he starts to throw off on what he sees around. I get on Church's nerves. Once I start giving him the once over, finding fault with everything he does, we never lay a fork without a knife or a spoon to partner it. He gets snarky and condescending in an especially British way, and uh, it's, it's like the Revolutionary War all over again. You know, they'll always be in England, and they're, they're always going to be a pain in the ass. But I think church begins to resent me considerably, particularly when I get bribed by uh, Mrs. Russell with a sum that is gobsmackingly huge. A hundred dollars. I understand I'm asking a lot. You could rely on me, madam. Don't give it another thought. I can't argue with that choice because she's doing it because Ward McAllister, the guest she's trying to impress, wants things done in the British way. He knows the British way. I don't know the British way. You have outdone yourself. 
Indeed you have. I have such a animus towards the, the Russells and that the Russells would somehow appropriate the family butler. It's utterly appalling. I'm still furious, and I'm delighted when it blows up in his face. What? Of course, the big question is why Mrs. Van Ryan doesn't fire him on the spot. It would be so hard to replace him, even though she finds the whole thing deplorable. I was a bit appalled when I read the script. Do my eyes deceive me? Aunt Agnes, what a surprise. <laughs> Mrs. Russell never said you were coming. This dinner party may be one of my favorite scenes, just because Christine Bransky is so hilarious. I mustn't interrupt your party. I should go. I must have misread the clock. She's very composed, but I think when she loses her temper, it's a frightening thing. There are those people, they're very contained, but when they lose it, well, heads have rolled for less. In her losing control is like a mortal wound to Agnes. To act on impulse is to make oneself a hostage to ridicule. <laughs> <laughs>